So hello and welcome to another magnificent episode of Heart to Heart with Eva and my very, very special guest today, Crystal Lynn Bell. Welcome. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's so good to have you here. Um, I'm going to do, oh, there's my dog. You have to, to accept him in the, in the, in the screen because he will probably move around. So just let it sink in here. Uh, Crystal Lynn, uh, I have been watching her on Facebook and uh, she has the most magnificent energy. So I just love everything that is coming from her. So just to get to know Crystal Lynn and uh, what she is doing on her pages, I'm just going to read the description here. So. Crystalline Bell is a spiritual life coach and Reiki master, and she is the founder of Badass Butterfly and Everyday Zen. So there's a LLC, and I don't know what that is standing for. That look, that's a that's an American business setup. So I have an LLC, and it's L it's Everyday Zen. Okay. <laughs> uh, she began offering a service online for over ten years ago while traveling from USA to Canada. Indonesia, India, Cambodia, Croatia, Spain, and Italy. Wow. <laughs> when she is not shedding light on the deepest recesses of the unconsciousness mind, she is helping heart centered women become spiritual life coaches with a solid business information. Yes. Love it. That is it. <laughs> Love it. So, who are you, Crystalline Bell? Ooh. Oh, you're going to just come out with the hardball questions right yes. off the bat, huh, <laughs> Eva? <laughs> um, well, I'm going to give you an honest answer because I think that's what you do um, here. Um, I am a soul who is on an adventure of evolving. And um, I came to Earth with the desire to... Um, to really expand personally and to teach. And uh, I'm really into spirituality. I started uh, being spiritual, like I, I came out of the womb spiritual. Yeah. And my mother was also very spiritual and she was into, but she was really into astrology. So she came out and she's like, oh my God, I have an Aquarius daughter and blah, blah, blah. And this is what I heard growing up. And as an adult, um, that spiritual connection was really important for me. Mm. And I started teaching and healing. And um, that's what brought me into being a spiritual life coach. I started off as a tarot reader, just doing that for fun. But then I um, went into massage therapy, loved touching people so much. And uh, from there, I thought, okay, I need to touch people more deeply. I need to move beyond the body and the energy field. I need to get into their minds. Yeah. And that's when I became a spiritual life coach. So you can actually say that you were born into this role that you have. Yes, very moment. much so. Yes, yeah. and it's written all over my astrology chart. So I'm kind of just doing what's I'm doing what comes natural. I'm, <laughs> if we believe in destiny, I was destined. And so, yes. <laughs> yeah, because that is the amazing part right now that there are so many people just blooming out. It's not that you are new because you have been on this path for a very long time, but it's such an amazing journey to actually know that this is what I was born to do and uh, I'm following my own heart and decision because that is a very tough decision for many of us to take, yes. uh, to, to take that leap of faith and, and go with with the flow of what you really do want to to do and you know is giving purpose and meaning to other people can you hear me all right yes i can hear you just fine yeah. Thank you. good yeah that's yeah I, I i agree and so i started off as a massage therapist and i had my own studio mm -hmm. and i had a lot of people working for me it was a really fun experience and I left that and I became a life coach and I've been working on my own. But then what I noticed was that I was working with women and I loved working with them, 
But what I didn't like was that we didn't have an outcome, like an end result that was tangible. They'd have, you know, they'd have, you know, they'd get a relationship or they'd get an improvement in their life. All those things, that was not a problem. But I wanted us to have a really solid goal. And that's when I started working on, um, I started developing a certification program to help women who actually want to be life coaches. And I just find it so interesting because the women who are coming to me have a feeling inside that is that they always say it's undescribable. I don't know where this came from, but I feel like my soul is calling me to do this work. And I'm like, I think your soul is, I think it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I checked your program out or the page where you were talking about, and I, it's, it's such a vibrating page. Um, there's a, the headlines that you are, that you have on your page is, are you ready to break free from the prison of unworthiness and to start truly living like a bad ass butterfly? And I, I think that is exactly what you're describing right now, that people are searching for some way to express themselves and uh, that's why they are coming to you. So how did you come up with the idea to go from, because I, I think that you started with Reiki in the beginning or am I wrong? I started with massage therapy, then I went into Reiki. So those two were, you know, very close. Yeah. Yeah, and that was my woo-woo effect was, was the Reiki. That was, well, tarot would be my first woo-woo, <laughs> but Reiki came next, yeah. Uh, so you do tarot too? Yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, interesting. I missed that on your page. Um, but when you were doing that massage th therapy and, and Reiki, is that what, when your, how to say, your, your thoughts about coaching came to life yeah I, I i think you're you're right eva um because people would come to me for massage and reiki and they would have a wonderful experience mm -hmm. and then they'd come back the next month and then they'd have another wonderful experience and they'd always come back feeling better but or they would leave feeling better but then they would kind of go back to their old habits, their old life, and things weren't changing. And that's when I realized that maybe I would be more fulfilled and maybe I could give more change and have a bigger impact if I actually could get their, you know, work with their mindset and work with their emotions and most importantly, if I could hold them accountable to the things they say they want for themselves. I like that. I know, me too. I want to be held accountable, you know? Yeah. It's so easy to just walk through life and not take a responsibility for, for what my actions and for my actions. And uh, yeah, we all need to, to have that yeah. kick in our life. So. Yeah. So when you started to, to coach, did you have a concept in your own mind where you wanted to go or did you just, you know, took one step ahead? Because you, you have a up running um, coaching programs and you do have courses. So would yeah. you like to talk more about what we can, what, what we can get from, from joining in? Yeah. Thank you so much. Um, there are two things that I, there are two things that I primarily do, but I'm realizing that it's really one thing. Mm -hmm. The two things that I do is I have a program for people who just want to work with me and receive coaching. And they have an objective, they start here, they want an outcome, and we work to take them to that outcome. I also have my certification program where there, there's a woman who wants to be a life coach and she doesn't know how, she doesn't, she's never done it before. She doesn't have any clients. She doesn't have an email list. She doesn't have any of the things. She's never run a business before. And I teach her everything. We set it all up. We do everything over 10 months, right? So I have those two things. 
the thing is both of those things under the the, the energy the energy underneath both of those things is this um transformation of unworthiness so for me i would say that if i came into this world with one big issue my big issue was unworthiness mm -hmm. and it showed up all over my life and and i suffered with unworthiness all my life until i realized you know the thing that helped me kind of crack the code within myself and that's what i teach my my, my clients well, when I'm working with people who want to start a, their business, I'm finding that these women have at their core a little issue of unworthiness. You know, there's an issue of not feeling, um, not feeling good enough, not not thinking big enough, not knowing um, that, not really understanding the power of the mind and shortchanging themselves because they don't realize the power that they have just right here. And once we start doing that, whether it's in their personal lives because they want a new relationship or they want a better job or they wanna improve their health, they wanna lose weight, they want to create something, they wanna have a baby or they want to build a business, it's the same thing. All it is, is a shift from I am unworthy to this is my life. I get to choose what I want. Mm -hmm. Once we make that shift, then everything goes in the way that they want it to go. And it's, I don't want to say it's simple, but it is very simple. You know, <laughs> it's just a matter of, again, knowing what needs to be done, having a system right? Because you do have to work at things and you know this, you have to work at things consistently in order to build something. It's not just, oh, I do it today and then I never have to do it again. You have to build. And I like to work on different levels, emotionally, intellectually, materially, energetically, you know, working with the chakras, working with the, with the aura, working with past lives, working with the shadow, working with beliefs, habits, all these things, when you work on them together, you can move a person more powerfully forward and they can have a successful outcome. Yeah. So you're connecting like a, you're a spiritual life coach, of course. Uh, but when you talk now, I get this picture that you are working with the spiritual, the spiritual human mind, body and soul. So it's, you are not leaving something out. It's a... Um, all over make over so to speak that is why is that why you choose the the caterpillar the butterfly because we are transforming in to our whole being yeah that's exactly why i mean be, besides the fact that caterpillars are so cute yeah. and you know they are so worthy but then everybody kind of looks at the butterfly and they think oh the butterfly and they think oh it's so delicate it's so fragile and i'm like no wait hold on a butterfly is beautiful but she had to earn those wings she had to you know the the colors of her wings are come from the color of her blood that she shed while she was you know having her children building her business you know dealing with all the things that she's dealt with you know in her past carrying her ancestors mm -hmm. so for me the caterpillar represents the earthly experience and and being connected but also limited you know as much as i love caterpillars they can't fly and they they really can they're really just about eating right <laughs> They are, they are. <laughs> That's it, just eating. Yeah. But, but then, of course, you know, they're eating and they're molting. They're breaking through their old skin. They're, they are growing. They are developing. And, of course, the inside of the uh, caterpillar is this beautiful butterfly. It already exists inside the caterpillar. It's just that when, you know, the, 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 the butterfly is developing and the caterpillar is developing, and I just love how when the caterpillar gets the call, that caterpillar mind has to start surrendering its experience 
to the butterfly mind that is also in existence, right? Yeah. And then the butterfly has to let go of the caterpillar self. And I love how the caterpillar's body actually becomes the cocoon and the butterfly has to break out of the shell of its own self. To me, that is incredibly badass. Like that is just like, oh, you know, giving birth to yourself in the most high form. I love it. I love yeah. it. That was so beautiful. When now when you're talking, uh, the whole room almost lighted up here. That was a real <laughs> moment of showing big and thinking big, earning your wings and and coming out there. And I also got another picture in my head when you were talking because nowadays a lot of us is using the mantra i am that i am and uh, and it feels good you know and and everybody is using it and when you are talking about following each soul that gets in touch with you and help them de develop their inner power and strength and actually become that that beautiful butterfly and step out of the cocoon. I, I saw this I am picture that, and what they truly want to say with that is that this is the physical embodying of I am that I am. Yes, is that okay I, to say that? I think that that is 100% okay because um, I think that that's ultimately what we all want. Yeah. I think we are all, it doesn't matter. Um, I, sometimes I call that self-actualization or reaching our, our greatest potential. Yeah. But for me, that is a, um, it's an energetic thing, but it's also a mental thing and it's a physical thing. And as much as, you know, I think about I am that I am as being kind of that God self. I like, I, lo I love life on earth. I love humanity. Even with the pain, the blood, sweat, and the tears, I find that it is a real privilege to be on earth. And I giggle a lot because a lot of my clients they say, oh, you know, I want to ascend, I want to ascend, you know, and, and life on earth and it's, you know, there's so much crap on earth. And I think, are you kidding me? This is, this is, this is an opportunity to really, you know, to, to live is, is the greatest gift. And helping people find that in the midst of pain is really the biggest challenge. And I understand you know, and I have this part of my framework where I talk about alchemizing pain. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's taking this, um, this wounding that we have and shifting it into something beautiful, something helpful, something worthy. And when I think about that I am presence, and I'm, I'm, I know this, this, I hope this isn't offensive to anyone, I think, Hello, I am presence. I love you, but I also love the, the, the pain that I feel. I love that, um, you know, if, if I'm cut, I'll bleed. That's, I have responsibility to take care, you know, and, and to not let myself bleed out or, you know, to make sure that my, my brothers, my people in my neighborhood, my, my community, that they are not bleeding out, that they're not left alone and abandoned as they're bleeding out, you know? Mm -hmm. So for me, as much as I appreciate this ascension of the I am, I'm also very much here on earth wanting to take care of the earth yeah. and be in physical form. Yeah. But these times we have chosen to be here and we really need to express ourselves and, and live this life. And I totally agree with you. Life is so beautiful and it's also almost a sin to enjoy life, the daily routines with the plants and the earth and, and everything. But um, that's why we are here, to, to feel our emotions, to feel everything that's going on here. So I really get what you are doing with this transformation and then a spiritual life coaching and 
when I'm looking at your page also, I can see that you you have a lot of these cute, uh, not cute. N now my dog is started to to play here. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I don't mind. I'm used to it. <laughs> this uh, this um, video posts that you are talking about mindsetting uh, and the uh, the power of actually stepping into your own mind and and determine your way to walk that path that you are, have such a mind to yeah. and um, one question that you put out there can you be material and spiritual mindset training for spiritual life coaches so i i love that because you were into that before when you were talking about this unworthiness and many times when we step into a role and accepting ourselves we are not fully accepting ourselves because they are so difficult to take that next step into a business. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, I can see, you know what I mean. <laughs> I do. I, because yeah. it's, it's an issue and it's not an issue for me because, um, if you know, numerology, I'm an eight mm -hmm. and I came here as an eight very strongly on many levels I'm an eight so I'm very much into business and running things being management and you know enjoying money and and, and material success those are really important for me um and you know I I don't like to talk in cliches but there are some important cliches that that come out when we think about being spiritual and we think about having material benefits, one of the cliches is that you know poverty is um, is is better than being wealthy. Mm. And to me, that might have been true, you know, in in Christ's time. I'm not sure if it was ever true, but maybe it was. I, I don't know, but it's, it came from somewhere, is what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. But for me, the um, it is not necessary wow. to um, to embrace poverty as a way of being. As a matter of fact, I just feel so strongly that um, God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, we've been blessed here to raise the material to the level of spirituality, which means that we should be using it and creating it and enjoying it you know, and, and also balancing it with mother nature. It's not so that we're consuming, consuming, consuming. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we should be consuming, consuming, consuming. I'm saying that we have an earth, we have resources and we should enjoy using them. So I, I, I believe that a balance between the spiritual and the material is totally doable. If we're not doing that, then we are out of balance. And we can, we should fix that. <laughs> yeah, because then we are not working with with body, mind, and spirit. Exactly. Yeah. So, exactly. thanks for clearing that up. But but I really do love those posts that you are you are showing there, and they are very very empowering. So, Thank do you, you want to talk more about what you have in your upcoming events or so? Sure. I mean, even that mindset class. Um, that's my newest creation, and it's a uh, it's a six week program that takes you through the mindset of a spiritual life coach. And a life coach, it has to be spiritual. Obviously, you have to be connected to spirit and understanding the divine, and you have to be able to work with people with their spirit. But we also have to have a really profound emotional connection. We have to understand emotions. We have to understand emotional pain. This is what people are suffering with. 99% of my clients are suffering fully from emotional pain. So that's an important part of our work. So the spiritual, the emotional, and then the material people are living on earth, they need to be able to have success in the material. And a spiritual life coach helps them move from the spiritual through the emotional into having successful material um, uh, manifestations. Mm -hmm. And for me in this mindset training program, I'm helping my students 
understand that within themselves, what it means to be spiritually, I like to say badass, right? I'm badass butterfly. So what does it mean to be a spiritual badass, an emotional badass, a material badass? We take all those on and we're equipping the, um, the up and coming spiritual life coaches with the things they need to know in order to be successful. Yeah. Because what people really need to understand is they have to make the first initi initiation and the first contact with you. And yeah. while they have done that, you will guide them through the next steps. So yes. it doesn't have to be in a certain level of consciousness or, or made their own business. That is why you are here to help them step into their full power. Exactly. Right. That is it, Eva. Yes. Thank you so much. Yeah. You put it very beautifully. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, you are a badass butterfly. I told totally you <laughs> that. I love that. Um, so just to I need to address, because I know that you have a class now. Yeah. Well, actually I'm done. You're my, you're my oh. final, my final step for the evening. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that, because I, also have another thing from one of your pages here and it says that badass butterfly spirit of love coach has three essential strengths yes strengths. Yeah. yeah and that is spiritual badassery emotional badassery and earthly badassery yeah. so that is so beautiful connected into body mind and spirit yeah and um Will you develop each one of those a little bit further? Yes, absolutely. So a lot of spiritual people are very connected to the divine feminine. Yeah, very connected to the divine feminine. And I, when I'm talking about the divine feminine, I like to think about it in terms of the inner world, the world of energy, the unseen world, the intangible feelings, emotions, um, ideas, things that are, um, are invisible. And we are connected very much to that. And so that is important that we have a good relationship with that if we are going to help other people heal, all right? Yeah. We have to have our intuition must be very, very strong. Well, we also, as I said, we need that emotional connection to emotional pain. We have to know how to master emotional pain. And for me, emotional pain is really hard, okay? Because a lot of times what we're feeling, you know, we're empathic. And so what other people are feeling, we don't know how to deal with it. We get it confused with our own self. So we have to learn how to, how to master emotions. For me, that gives us authority as a life coach. Um, you know, Eva, I'm not sure of how it works. You're in Sweden, right? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I'm not sure of how it works in Sweden, but in the United States, we have therapists like, um, like uh, counselors, therapists, psychologists, and and, and um, uh, psychiatrists. Yeah. And they have to go to school for years in a formal university. Same here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, a life coach here in the United States does not have to go. They don't get a certification through a university. They can get a certification through someone like me, or they can simply hang out a sign and say, hey, I'm a life coach. So anyone can call themselves a life coach. So the problem, it's wonderful in that it allows you a lot of freedom to, to start and to do your own thing. There's tremendous freedom. The problem though, is where do you get your qualifications? What qualifies you to help other people? So imposter syndrome is rampant with people who want to become spiritual life coaches. If they haven't done the work, if they haven't created something and invested themselves and learned and done research and built a solid foundation for themselves, who's gonna trust them and why should they be trusted, right? Good point. So 
this is why I've developed that idea, that concept of these three, three points, the spiritual, emotional, and material or earthly badassery. Those things are, are going to help you feel like you deserve to teach others because my program is really rigorous. It's 10 months, Eva. It's 10 months and it is it's hard and it's not that it's sorry whoops sorry I got to turn off all the speakers here all the technology is going off <laughs> but it's really challenging to get through things because I'm I'm asking my students to take responsibility for the fact that they want to help other people with the most intimate parts of their lives your spirituality is intimate that's not something you just throw out to anyone and you don't trust any just anyone with your past lives with your karma with your heart with your dreams you have to be qualified to be a life coach mm. and that's where those three principles work together i help my clients and my students um, recognize their how to use their intuition how to find their authority with emotional pain and how to operate their business so that they are actually they know how to make money. They know how to run their business. They know how to, to gain clients. All of those things come together. Uh, that's perfect. You actually answered the other question I, I was going to say here. Um, you were uh, talking a, a bit about saying take responsibility and have to done the work by yourself uh, in, in the process that you are in your 10 months course you have to take a responsibility for your own action and work through the old stuff. You, you answered that question I, I just wrote up um, to, yeah. to ask you that because a lot of people, I, I totally agree, there, there's a lot of things going on here and they're so easy to go out there and uh, to, to offer a service and uh, a lot of people have the best intention of doing so, but they haven't done the inner work by themselves. So when they are are in uh, in, in this uh, work with another pe with another human being, they also transforming themselves or transmitting their own things to them. So that is so good that you brought that up that you are actually working through that through your program so yeah. yeah i do know that you have 10 months and i, I thought wow she's really serious about yeah. this no thank you so much for acknowledging that and especially that inner work part because the work is um the work is definitely starting on the inside and that is where you will find your authority to help yourself and to help other people. And it's not that you have to be perfectly healed. You're, we're not looking for perfection inside. We're looking for someone who's willing to look at themselves and to do the hard work. That's it, right? Yeah. If you're willing to do that, that to me is the starting point of the qualifications because you cannot give someone what you don't have. And if you're not looking willing to look at yourself, then you can't ask someone else to be willing to look at themselves, you know? Mm. I mean, I guess you can, people can do that. But in my opinion, I'm looking for authenticity. <laughs> yeah. Imposter syndrome does not slip in when you are living authentically, when you are honest with yourself, when you're in integrity. Mm. So my program is definitely meant to help you get, get all of that. We spend three months, three months working just on the internal process so that you can go forward and do the work that you need to in the um, material world uh, to create the, the business part of your business. Mm. I, I love that part. Uh, I know that is a bit scary for many people and, and uh, it's a lot of hard work within yourself where you're working with yourself but I, but I love it and uh, as you said are you up for it just you know dive into it and to have a guide and a, and a coach to to guide you through it is the the best thing you can ever have so that is a beautiful thing but I also thinking like everything is evolving so when you have done this 
work both with your customs and uh, with yourself because I'm talking from my own point of view now uh, as long as I still working with others I am growing and expanding and moving on with my own consciousness and my own interest so I'm thinking like where is your wings gonna take you in the future yeah um gosh that's a great question thank you I've been really looking at that myself and the expansion of my business is one thing uh, that's my first three-dimensional world answer. Um, the thing that's most exciting for me right now is um, a phrase that keeps popping into my head and it's more life, more life, deeper relationships, more life, more connection, more boldness in my connection. And, you know, I live in Paris and, you know, it's a city. And so, I'm finding myself here with my dog, approaching people and walking up to people on the street and looking them in the eye. And in you know, Par Parisians are very much like, they're a little shy and they're like, we don't look at one another. We, we, look, we, look, we look quietly at one another. We don't engage with other people on the street. And for me, I'm feeling like, no, you're gonna engage with me, I'm here. I'm a human, I'm here. And I want to see you. I don't care that you are caught up in your own world. I'm just going to see you. And so I'm looking at people more boldly. I'm speaking more openly. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm reaching out and connecting more with people. And that's kind of where my wings are taking me. And what, do, what that's going to lead to, I'm not sure. I mean, I already have a wonderful life. I travel all over. Um, you know, I am you know, I'm dating, which is kind of neat. It's neat to be dating, um, you know, at the age of 52. I'm like, oh, dating at the age of 52, that's an experience, okay? Um, but yeah, so just more life and more um, connection. Yeah, uh, I think it was beautiful too. You see, I usually get when, when people are talking I, I sometimes get uh, a lot of pictures in my in my hand and I had a, a new picture here dropping by and when you were speaking there by connection you know to to acknowledge the people that you are meeting uh, I saw this this pillar of light with you standing within it and and there was a lot of people around but there were a bit of shadow across them so I guess that you are one of the pillars of light that are anchoring another consciousness into the humans here. That is amazing. That that's my interpretation of it. So we need to to actually oh I totally agree. There's a lot of people who avoid eye contact. It's like they, they think that you want something from them and just want to say hi. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So and then that is a scary thing and it's time to leave that behind because we are here and we are connected and we are all one in the um, biggest sense so why not start connecting with the energies here right now you're so right on to it I, I love it I love it so, thank you. and thank you so much for saying you see the, the pillar of light around me that's that's powerful I will I will take that with me and remember that as a as a way to help connect more with people because it's not so easy you know it's no. it's not always so easy to remember what i what i want for myself when it and what i want to experience and what i want to share you know and i i don't want to be um you know i don't want to invade people but i want to open a door like hey do you want to come in you want to come into my pillar of golden light yeah <laughs> And everybody saying, yeah, I want to, yes. <laughs> I love that. Oh, I love that's that. Beautiful. That's beautiful. So, yeah, is there anything else you want to, to bring up? I think that the, you have this spiritual coach program and, and yeah, you were well, going to say something. Well, what I was going to do, I, I mean, you know, Eva, I'm, you and I are new Facebook friends. I would love to learn a bit about you as well. What brings you to this 
um, interviewing process. What, what called you to this? Oh, well, I'm like you are a massage therapist in the beginning and I'm also a healer, Reiki healing, quantum healer. And uh, I also work with elder. I have a night shift job and I work with elders. And I really enjoy doing that and I don't want to cut it out from my life because I need to have that. For me, it's, my, it's like the earthly balance to what I'm doing because I have tried to go all in in the spiritual work state of mind and I'm just moving up in, in the <laughs> in the sky with my thoughts. So I need to be in a in that kind of work to have that balance and it makes me feel very good to be there. But I also want to have my spiritual life, of course. And I've always been in uh, communities. Either I've been working in, um, what do you call it? Sororities, like, like that, yeah. Sororities like sisterhoods? Y yeah. And, uh, and also, you know, like communities where people come and then uh, we have people, speechers talking about mediumship or whatever. So I always been in those communities all my life. And like you, I have a mother who has dreams that sometimes are very, very uh, extraordinary. And, uh, you know, this always you, you've grown up with a certain certain state of mind and you're you know landing in yourself and you're exploring it so but the past years i have actually not done so much spiritual work i have been in the physical world and now like 2020 like everybody else i just have this urge within me connect with my feminine side again and um i got into a lot of priestess circle and uh, it's been such a wonderful time and I'm connecting in, in a lot of different ways and, and making contacts with people all over the world and that is such a beautiful thing so for me excuse me for saying this but the pandemic wow what an opportunity for for connection with a broader aspect so everything is perfectly aligned and that without saying uh, anything else about that but um yeah so i was sitting one day and and i thought there's a lot of people who needs to to be seen and heard and uh, i want to bring forth you know the the um the vision of that we are so much more than just a physical body going to work get our money pay the rent and go back to work there's a whole uh, another spectra here so that's that's got that got me to think about like how can i do that because no one is going out in the community anymore uh, since the pandemic you know yeah so yeah so i thought why not I sent a message to one of the priestess that I met from Donna Vecchio's uh, Return to the Priestess. I don't know if you have seen that one. I think I, yeah, I think I actually have, yeah. But... Yeah. <laughs> so so I, um, I reached out to one of, of the priestess there and uh, she said, of course, I will come on your show and talk. And I was so nervous, but that was so fun. That was so fun and, and uh, then it started to grow so I actually opened up a Swedish page now so I'm nice. looking for for Swedish to do it in my own language too but as you said you know Swedish are a bit shy too we don't like to come live and talk about ourselves you know and we don't like to to be there yeah expressing ourselves in in the in the, uh, the live fee so yeah. So that is why I'm doing this right now. So I'm not sure where I'm going next, but I want to do workshops. I want to be, I want to do workshops. Yeah. yeah. And um, dive into that. So we also have this called Magnific Magnific Magnificent Mind that we are going live tomorrow. And we are seven people, eight people, seven, eight people that are going on a panel to discuss. So the, to have discussions. So yeah, it's going, it's, it's a fun time right now. Yeah, there's a lot of creativity and it sounds like you are right in the center of it. Wonderful. Love it. Love it. 
Wonderful. So th that is me right now. And uh, we'll see where we are going with this. Uh, yeah. And I love to meet new people. I love to scroll around and I see, you know, someone who actually believes in what they are doing and just vibrating. And I am so like if I'm going to talk about you, I, I, when I read your pages, I, I was thinking to myself, well, she's in Paris and we don't have we haven't heard about her here, but we all have Internet. So, yeah, you, yeah. you and I got connected pretty recently on um on Facebook, so I thought, well, let's let's ask her. Does she want to come on live and talk? And, and here you are. And I I'm love so glad it. You did that. Yeah, I'm that's really... wonderful. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It's yeah. such a. It was so neat when I, I I think I might have reached out to you for friendship, and I'm like, oh, she looks very cool, and I'm like, okay, mm. and. Then you were like, hey, you want to come and do a live with me? I'm like, yeah, why not? Let's talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I responded totally to that bad as butterfly. And I was like, bad as butterfly. Yeah, that's the high vibrational name. I do want to meet her. <laughs> yeah, I totally love that. <laughs> so, oh, thank you so um, much, Eva. Yeah. That's really nice. Really nice. So, yeah, that's us. That's us. And yeah. In this now. But back to you, my dear, back to you. I just want to make sure that we haven't forgot to mention anything. No, I think we have covered, I think we've covered the most important things. Yeah, that's pretty good. So then I guess we are about to close it, to close up here. And I just want to say that we are going to post the uh, Crystal's Facebook uh, link and her www website yeah website thank you mm -hmm. uh in the comment field so you can reach her uh, and uh, don't be afraid to check her page out because that is a solid program that she is doing and she will be taking care of you all the way and For sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't have to be already there that's why crystal is here because you are being guided through the steps so if you just have a desire of moving forward in your life reach out to her she's a badass butterfly ah, yes thank you absolutely thank you so much eva i really i enjoyed this it was lovely meeting you and connecting yeah thank you so much it was a place and i hope we'll meet again and, and see what's uh, what's next in our lives exactly further further in our lives so to speak yeah excellent um, thank you so much thank you and thank you for listening and uh, please join us again in the future and uh, we'll be back tomorrow with magnificent magnificent minds thank you crystalline all right thank you bye bye, bye.